What's going on everyone? You're watching the Iron Gordon channel. Thank you for being here. Today, I'm gonna make this helmet look like this helmet using spray paint and an airbrush I bought off Amazon. Let's get in the project. So first things first, I gotta take apart the helmet. I start by taking off the windscreen and then I start pulling off any hardware that is easily removable. And then I start pulling all the padding out. A lot of this stuff's held in with Velcro and these red snaps. So I just remove what I can without damaging the helmet. Then I'm gonna wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol and that's just gonna remove any fingerprints or any manufacturing greases or oils or anything that may have happened during shipping. Just so I have a nice clean surface to start doing my prep work with. Then using just blue painter's tape and X-Acto blade, I start taping off any of the plastic or the rubber areas that I don't want paint to get on. Making sure to seal up the entire helmet, including all the little air vents. Then I give it another wipe down with some more alcohol just to remove the fingerprints I might have put back on it before I move on to wet sanding. Using 400 grit sandpaper and clean water, I start to sand the entire helmet to really give myself a nice, clean, smooth surface to attach my primer to. For primer, I'm using the Spraymax 2K Epoxy Primer. Now this is a two-part system. Inside this can is another can that contains its catalyst. You take this red button from the lid, you pop the bottom, and then you start shaking it up really good, and you start spraying it like any other spray paint. After I let that primer cure, I hit it with some Red Scotch Bright Pad just to knock down any dust or any imperfection that might have found its way into the paint. And once again, coming in with the isopropyl alcohol, just to give it one more good wipe down before I actually start color coat. Again, to remove any fingerprints or oils or anything that might have gotten itself onto the paint during this entire process. For my base color, I'm using Hunt Club Green from rust -Oleum. And once I have that coated on the helmet, nice and even, I'm gonna start smattering it with some more drab green spray paints, just to kind of give it some more visual texture. To make this helmet more of a color tone that I'm actually after, I'm gonna hit it with some of this Little Daddy Roth Sublime Green Candy Paint. Now I'm gonna start creating some faux body panels using some eighth inch masking tape and some blue painter's tape. And I'm just gonna follow some of the contour lines of the helmet so that I come back in with the airbrush and blast in some shadows so that it really kind of creates this idea that there's panels on the helmet that are going to be riveted together later. Okay, let me interrupt the video real quick just to show you my airbrush setup. Now, airbrushing's always been one of those things I'm a little intimidated to get into, but I found this kit on Amazon and it's an it's an all-in-one battery operated airbrush kit. Now this isn't the exact one I'm using in the video. Because I have a couple of them, but the idea is the same. This little black cylinder down here is the air compressor and the battery for it. It's real simple, you can unscrew the compressor from the airbrush itself. Once it's all assembled, the only way to operate it, you hit this little white button that turns on the air compressor and you pull the tr finger trigger back just like you would any other airbrush. It's fully adjustable, dismantles really easy, and it's rechargeable with a USB cord. And inside the brush I'm using these just simple acrylic paints. Uh, this kit came with 12 different colors and a cleaner. It's a pretty non-committal way to get into airbrushing and try it out if it's something you've ever thought you might want to get into. Okay, back to the video. Coming back in with more blue painter's tape on the opposite side of that panel that I just created, I'm gonna take some silver spray paint and start dabbing in areas just to kind of create the idea that the green paint has been chipped off and is exposing metal underneath it. and I'm gonna follow up all that silver paint with a dark rust tone. I'm gonna to mix this right inside of the airbrush and start hitting all those areas that I just created with the silver paint. As well as some additional areas to make it look like the rust has been dripping over time. Then mixing up a lighter rust tone that I layer right on top of the dark tones I just created, not covering them completely, using this lighter tone as an additional layer of color and texture to create the rust look. Now that the rust is out of the way, I'm gonna move on to the rivets. On a vinyl plotter, I cut out these little stencil stickers. 
of circles that I felt fit the scale of the helmet and they're evenly spaced. I'm going to lay these down in a way I think looks visually appealing and evenly spaced so that I can begin painting the rivets on. With the airbrush full of black paint, I come back and I hit the stencil right around the circles to help create a shadow using the black. And then I follow that up with white, with just doing the very center of the circle to create a highlight. Here's a quick little pro tip. Put the lid on your airbrush paint cup so that when you inevitably drop it, you don't spill paint all over your jeans. After I cleaned up, I pulled off the stencils and I was left with these results. In my mind, the rivets looked a little too clean, so I took some more of that candy green just to mute down that white a little bit. Okay, so the client asked me to do a Hap Arnold logo on the sides of the helmet and also some text and numbers on the back. It's a custom helmet, it's all very personalized towards him, but I'm going to be using a tan colored spray paint and a Navajo white colored spray paint to get the weathered aged effect I'm after. I'm going to slap, so I'm going to slap these stencils down and then spray paint them on. Here we go. Moving on with this, I apply the stencil to the helmet and then apply masking tape all around it to avoid any overspray. I hit it with the darker tan color first just in a couple of spots and then I blast over it with the Navajo white. Now when you're doing a stencil a little paint goes a long way, especially on one like this that I want to look weathered. I'm not trying to go for full opacity here, I just want to get kind of a misting of color on there. While I'm letting that paint dry, I go back and remask off and repaint with black the shadow lines I created earlier. All right, so now I have all the artwork done on the helmet. I'm gonna hit it with some gloss clear. The important thing to do on your initial clear coat is you just wanna do a light, light dusting of clear. And then after that dries off, you can go a little bit heavier. And you wanna work up the layers of clear coat. You don't wanna go heavy handed the first run. That's when your paint starts to crinkle, that's when you start to have bad reactions with clear coat. You destroy your artwork and you gotta sand and start over. And I'm trying to avoid that. So first coat, just a nice, light dusting. You're gonna wanna let that dry for, I don't know, like 10 minutes. So on coats two and three, you can go a little bit heavier handed with the clear coat. You just really wanna avoid any drips and runs. Once that clear coat is dry, I'm gonna wet sand it with 800 grit to knock down any imperfections that may have come up into the paint in the process. And I'm going to keep sanding the helmet until all the shine is completely removed from the paint job. And finally when it's all done, I'm going to use the Spraymax 2K Matte Clear Coat to give this thing a nice satin finish. And just like the primer we use, this is a two part process. Use the button from the top of the lid to pop the canister on the bottom, shake it up real good, and blast over the entire thing. I went ahead and hit this thing with three to four coats of clear, giving it about 10 to 15 minutes between each coat to flash off. Then going ahead, peeling off all the tape, reassembling the helmet, and you know what? I think it's finished. Okay, so I'm going to put this at the end of the video because inevitably someone will leave a comment letting me know that you cannot spray paint a helmet. From my experience and from my own research, 
it doesn't seem to be detrimental as long as you tape off the foam inside the helmet so that no spray paint can come in contact with it and as long as you do not sand through the factory paint job and let spray paint touch the raw shell of the helmet you should be fine but with all that being said i am not an expert and if you're not comfortable spray painting your helmet then please do not spray paint your helmet. This was just a video for entertainment purposes to show you how I paint and what my processes are. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I'll try better next time.